In this video, we're going to be going over everything that you need to know when starting out in Vigor. I know you're probably looking at the menus, all confused and everything, don't know what's going on, but we're going to cover all of that in this video. Alright guys, so the first tab that we're going to go over is the Equip tab. Here you have your entire weapon arsenal, ranging from weapons, ammo, and consumables, just like you see here. So getting right into it, go into your weapons, and you have all your owned weapons, and you either have a white wrench or a yellow wrench, okay? A yellow wrench means that you're able to craft the weapon. A white wrench means that you're already crafting a weapon and there's a wait time. You can only craft one weapon at a time as of right now. Going into the center column where you see the gun name, parts, crafting table plan, and the material number. What this means is you'll only be able to craft a weapon if you have weapon parts or the crafting table level that is needed for that weapon, the plan that is needed for that weapon, and the materials. So we'll go over what the crafting table is later on in the video. The plan, a weapon plan, is a blueprint of a gun to where you don't need the parts in order to build it, you could just use the plan and all you need is the crafting table level and materials. Um, materials are an in-game currency. There's two different types of in-game currency, which is crowns and materials, and technically food. You could see it all up here. Materials, food, and crowns. Materials is a type of in-game currency that you use to craft weapons, ammo, or consumables. So right above that section that we just went over, you have your weapon wheel. This is where you place your weapons. This is what happens when you're trying to place weapons in. You get asked this, how much ammo do you want to take out? Take out however much, and it puts it there. On the right side, you have all your weapon stats and the weapon info. It also, when you're crafting, um, it will also show how much time it will take. Not only it counting down, but also under the plan selection it will tell you how long it will take to craft that weapon. For consumables, it's basically the same exact premise that I just went over with the weapons. The ammo is just a tad bit different. You can't craft ammo with using parts. You have to have the plan in order to craft it. Otherwise, you'll just have to get it from looting in-game. My gun just crafted, and now I have five. You see the number of how much of that weapon you have. If you press R2 or RT on Xbox, you go into the Deconstruct tab, and what this is, is just as we were talking about before, the different types of in-game currency of materials, food, or crowns. This is mainly around the material, the materials currency. Basically, you break down weapons in order to get materials from them. And just as a um, recap of what we were going over before, you need materials in order to craft things if you have the plan for it. Another thing that I would want to go over is there's a certain time limit if you have the weapon plan, just as you know it says right here, one minute it will take to craft. But if you have the weapon parts, it will be instant. 
You could see on the right aspect of the screen, you have loadout, and then it has all these different circles of sections. And what this is, is basically everything that you take out into the encounter. So going into the next tab is the Outlands tab. And what this is, is basically how you load in to the game. So the top three pictures are all the same game mode, which is encounter. And what encounter is, is just the regular extraction royale. You load into the map and you either choose to eliminate other enemies, loot, or stay for the airdrop, or leave. It's the most popular one. The ones down here, shootout, it's basically like free for all in Call of Duty. It's just you versus everyone, and you're trying to compete to the top leaderboard to win awards. The elimination is 5v5, like a, a team play type of mode. Basically the same thing as Search and Destroy from Call of Duty. There's a certain time frame to where you have to capture the flag. Yeah, it's pretty fun. Elimination. You can have five people in your party for shootout. You can only do it solo. And for encounter, only teams of three. So under the game mode, you can see the map name and the this time thing, this time cycle. There's several different maps in the game. I think there's like 10 or 11 different maps. You can only play three different maps for, you know, the time cycle that it's going through. Looking over to the left, you see encounter, you have your party, and then you have this lone wolf thing. Now, <laughs> the lone wolf is basically you're soloing against teams of two and three. And I would only recommend doing this if you're like really trying to like level up like your skill or if you know you're already established because people within the vigor community we all know when you're going against teams of three it's like 10 20 percent chance survival rate because the game is like so balanced so yeah if you turn on lone wolf then you get like more xp the store tab is basically just all cosmetics and in-game merchandise that you can purchase from either in-game currency of crowns or you can buy crowns with real life money all right guys so going into the battle pass tab we're all kind of familiar with what this is it's basically just like your season pass it lasts only a certain amount of time you have all your unlocks by default you'll just have the top row and if you buy it with crowns in-game currency for 790 you get the bottom row now this is something that you get every time a new season comes you get the current season but for legacy season these are basically past seasons that we've already gone through. So you can go back into them if you buy them for 330 crowns. And the thing with these is once you buy it, you have it. There's no certain amount of time that it disappears or anything. So you can literally go all the way to level 50 without worrying about any time or anything. All right, so going into the challenges tab, these are just your challenges. These are the daily challenges here um, that, you know, reset in eight hours. This top one, I'm not really sure what it is, but when you complete it, it goes away. I don't know if it's a daily one or anything, but when you complete it, it goes away. So 
like because there's no there, it's not telling you what it is at the top i'm just confused about it but these are your daily ones that um once you complete them they're just completed and you'll get uh they'll reset to new ones after the eight hours now this was in the new update and these are basically throughout the 123 days or throughout the you know the the current season battle pass they give you like seasonal challenges so they're not like daily or anything like these are like harder challenges that you can complete throughout the entire season all right so this is probably the majority of the video's time that we're gonna be talking about but basically let's just get right into this i don't want to make this video too long but i'm gonna just skim through this okay if you guys have any questions just comment down below okay or else it's gonna take like 30 minutes so you have this white bar okay and what that is is how many improvements that you've already built if you haven't built any then there won't be like a white bar that goes this far for you it will just be up by like up here by level one basically what this bar is is where your levels at and how far you have unlocked going into the crafting table improvement in the improvement section where like this icon is circling at is the crafting table and what this is is basically it's how you're able to craft so as you can see right here you have these options you either could craft with the parts or you could craft with the crafting table the plan or the materials so the AKM what was needed to craft the AKM was crafting table level three so when you go back here it's basically how i'm going to be able to craft this sniper with a plan is if i have this built okay and that will go f for every weapon and every consumable also for each improvement in order to build them you need resources and you can see the resources at the bottom of the screen. Do you have metal parts, wire, nails, fertilizer, glass, chemicals, gas, and electronics? And basically what those are and how you get them is when you go out in an encounter, that's your loot. You bring it back to the shelter and it's now your own resources. It's a currency that makes you able to build improvements. You can see here, um, on here I'll build this one um, because the best things to build I'll just say now are it's really everything but you want to stick to building things that generate currency or types of currency so that being food here is food here is food box of plants is food rat trap is food and antenna is crowns and that's like the main in-game currency that you're able to buy like the next season without paying real money you can just generate in-game crowns food you can donate it to a charity box and you can get crates from it like reward crates so i'll stick to building the antenna and the food Another thing just to, this is how I do it, um, and I feel like it's it's the smartest way. Make sure you build all of your improvements within like multiple pairs. So see how I didn't just focus on one rat trap and get it all the way up to five. No, I did it like all of them pretty much at the same time because you'll be generating more and your food you want to you want to get it up to 10,000 before you even donate because there's no point of um, donating under that this is how you get to the um, donation box it's back here 
could go the other way too. You go here and you donate. Um, since this is an alt account, I've been saving since like a couple months and I don't really play on Xbox much. But it would still be hard as like a beginner to get up to 10,000. It would take like probably months or whatever. But um, so if I were to donate 5,000 right now, you could see when the time goes out in six days, eight hours. If I donate 5,000, then when that time runs out, I'll only get this and I'll have to restart it all over again. So there's no point to doing that because I could just get the 10,000 too. And you'll also, if you donate, you know, 5,000 or 10,000, you'll also get all the other crates too. So there's there's no point of just donating to get a rare crate no you donate to get everything so never donate under 10,000 everything else you could get your box of herbs up just take it up to like maybe six you don't really need to bring this all the way up to 13 because you don't need like millions of materials I don't try to have it lower than 400,000 I keep it between 400 and 600,000 for materials the crafting table you see these like green sheets of paper on certain weapons that is a blueprint it's called a plan a weapon plan so how you get weapon plans is you either get them from the main season or you get them from legacy seasons or you get them from crates so as you can see right here when i get a special issue crate i'll get a pss plan so going on to the next aspect is the wood log basically what this is is material generator it says right here it generates 36 materials per hour and that costs 1,288 nails. Going on to the next column is, or actually before I go into the next column, there's columns, right? Like the um, vertical columns, okay? And then you have like the horizontal aspect. So the wood log is like a material generator so is the box of herbs and all these right so it's kind of like all connected i'll i'll like draw it out all on screen of how it all connects okay so these are all material generators that as you build you generate more materials these are all food generators and what food is for is you donate it to the donation box in order to get crates the smokehouse is to increase the production of food and what this means is see right here it says generates three food per hour i don't i don't know the exact calculations but if you upgrade the smokehouse this will change to like generates six food per hour the box of plants is also a food generator and the outhouse acts the same as the smokehouse does for the rat traps so when you're upgrading your shelter see it says generates 3.6 crowns per day and it has already generated two to collect the crowns or to collect the materials or to collect the food you actually have to go to the station so this is the box of plants you go collect it and then it shows up in your food right up here and you go to your wood log get your materials go to your box of plants or box of herbs i mean get your materials then you go to your antenna get your crowns to collect more food you don't only have the uh, box of plants, you also have rat traps, which are in the house. Um, there's one here. 
if you have it built, this is where they are. Two. I don't have this one built, but it would be there. And then the last one is downstairs. Those are your stations that you go to. Oh, also, there's metal parts that you can collect. Um, I don't have this built, but I don't recommend building this more than like three or four because you get so many metal parts just looting anyway, so there's no point to just generate 200 every day or whatever when you can literally go out and encounter and get that in pretty much like three or four encounters. The water distillation, just like we were talking about with the consumable crafting, it takes a certain amount of time in order to craft something. So with the water distillation, it reduces the crafting time, but only for consumables. Weapons, it just is what it is with the time. You can't like make it less unless you spend crowns on it which i don't ever recommend doing i would just wait for it going into the next is the antenna the antenna is how you generate in-game currency without buying it with real money so this is like golden okay to upgrade this next one is chemical distillation when you're deconstructing you gain more so if I upgrade this, when I deconstruct a weapon, it says I'll get 127 materials from it, but if I upgrade the chemical distillation all the way up, this might go up to like a thousand, just for one. That's an over-exaggeration, I don't think an M1911 would ever go that high, but that's just an example. Utility room is reducing the amount of materials that it takes to craft consumables scrap bin is just it generates metal parts generator allows you to build more than one thing at a time the wind turbine helps you build things faster so as you upgrade the wind turbine instead of this rat trap that i'm upgrading right now taking 20 minutes if i upgrade it you know a bit more i'm not really i'm not good at math but the time will decrease as you can see up here when i was talking about the white bar at first as you build more it will grow with the green you see right here it says 30 plus one um, when i get to 34 i'll unlock this level of the shelter all right so <laughs> that is the build slide this is the customized this is just basically all your outfits and everything you got your jesters hey. the classic hey. ridiculousness that's going on hey. here the weapon skins and the titles is basically in the startup if you um, put one of these on i'll put the builder one on when you're loading into a match, you can, you know, show off your swag <laughs> um, and <laughs> what you've attained from your awards to other people. All right, so the special issue crate is basically all of the best weapons. It gives you weapon plans, materials, a lot of materials. That is a lot of nails. Um, shootout crate if you win a shootout like the game mode shootout if you win it you have to get first place in order to do it which is pretty challenging you'll get a crate if you win a, an elimination you'll get a crate weapon crate you get weapons resource you get resource and the resource crate is something that i would really try to get as a beginner in this game so you can you can see here that all the crates are color coded in either white green blue purple or yellow and basically what that is it's basically 
the white is the lowest rank quote unquote and the yellow is the highest so it goes in rank it goes white green blue purple yellow yellow being the highest so there's only certain guns that can shoot through walls and it's kind of a bit confusing um to like understand what guns shoot through walls because it depends on the gun as well as the ammo type so if you're shooting with a military grade or a um, special issue meaning if you're shooting with a purple gun or a yellow gun it doesn't matter what type of ammo you have it will shoot through walls but if you're shooting with a blue gun and it has military grade ammo it will shoot through walls so if you want a wall bang you have to either use purple gun or yellow gun or you would have to use guns that take yellow ammo or purple ammo so yeah it's it's not really that hard to understand actually but yeah going into the collections just basically when you're in your encounter there's like these easter eggs slash collectibles that you can collect these are the trolls the lighters and the vinyls the vinyls you can equip back in your shelter and actually listen to the music which is pretty cool the metals is just basically all your metals the leaderboard is just you know the leaderboard it shows you all your stats so this is how you invite people um you press the pause menu like the on the on the xbox it's just like the three lines on the playstation it's the um the options button and you basically just press one of these and you have one of your friends right there and you invite all right guys so something that i want to explain is what pretty much every consumable does okay so you go into the consumables and then you have your bandage this is basically what you use when most of your health is gone like if if you get critically hit if you just got like just a little bit of health gone then you would use the disinfectant the armored plate is just armor it's basically like extra health the iodine there's radiation that comes when you're in the match it temporarily stops your health from going down grenade it's a grenade flashbang flashbang antibiotic it tells you it right here um it restores your health over time caffeine stops the drainage of your stamina for a certain amount of time the jammer is basically like the big jammer that you can press when you're inside of a match but the this portable jammer it only spreads about 40 meters the big jammer spreads like 150 or like 200 meters or something like that transmitter is it basically when you hit the signal detector or even a portable signal detector it will act as a decoy so if you put a transmitter down it will show up as a signal on the map so someone will think that there's someone there when really it's just a decoy the alarm trap is if you walk in its proximity uh, it makes a sound uh, painkiller just restores all your health a good way to use the painkiller is to also take an antibiotic with it so basically what that does is it the painkiller temporarily restores it so as it's going back down like the painkiller is wearing off the antibiotic will be settling in the glint is basically a decoy of a sniper scope um so in this game if someone's sniping you and they're aiming down sights you'll be able to see their glint so this acts as a decoy the strike it's just a mortar strike basically um an airstrike a portable signal detector is a portable signal detector 
and it it only reveals one person instead of how the main signal detector reveals all people on the map the portable signal detector only reveals a person that's closest to you the radiation grenade this thing you throw it in an area and there's like certain levels of radiation so like the middle like in the middle of where the grenade exploded there's so much radiation that will like drain your health like in like five seconds ten seconds and on the outskirts it's like it's not that much but it's still a lot and it will drain your health like if you sit in it you'll probably be dead in like 20 seconds and the only way to um stop the radiation from happening is if you have an iodine and you consume it within the radiation or as you're coming out of it that's another thing as you come out of the radiation the radiation is still within your body so there's like a certain time limit the radiation bar has to go down all the way for your health to um not decrease anymore which makes it like even more powerful oh another thing to mention is how you know that there's a radiation grenade in an area is because there's like these glowing dust things that look like lightning bugs like all over the area the proximity of the radiation grenade is 40 meters the booby trap is basically you can put it on looted areas so say like there's like some cabinet that hasn't been looted yet so you can with the booby trap you can bait it so if someone goes to loot that cabinet they'll get blown up they they'll probably not die but their health will be like taken away some contact bomb is basically like a proximity mine the improvised mine is basically a stun bomb it doesn't kill you but it like stuns you so bad the decoy just acts as gunfire and the thing with with all these decoys like the glint the transmitter all of them look exactly the same as the real thing like the decoy sounds exactly like you can't really tell at all if something is a decoy or not unless like you know for sure but the thing with the actual decoy that i'm hovering over right now there's no way to like know unless you know the exact sound of like the rhythm of the decoy because it it shoots off pretty much every type of gunfire the fireworks it's what a firework should look like in a game all right guys so throughout this whole video it's kind of all over the place with how the screen looks and everything because i've been recording this video over like a span of several months and through the span of that several months the game has changed and you know updated and everything so um hopefully it doesn't like ruin the video or anything because i i worked like very hard on this video but anyway going into you know the iodine tab um it used to be yellow but now it's purple um I don't think it got nerfed or anything um i just think the radiation got leveled up so the iodine like you used to be able be able to only take one and that would be good but now you have to take like three in order to make it out safely because the radiation is literally like it's more balanced but in my opinion they buffed it like crazy but it is balanced I'm not gonna lie on that i already went over the radiation grenade the adrenaline shot it just makes you faster and in my opinion if you're trying to outplay people this is how you do it because this is kind of like a hack honestly <laughs> like it makes you have fast run like i've used it once and if you know how to do you know the zigzag stuff and you add this to it you're not gonna die you're gonna outplay them like crazily all right guys so another thing i want to go over is the info section and basically what all these icons mean and everything 
like the squares that say single shot, three round burst, and uh, full auto in the other ones. So basically, this one right here is single shot. The next one is three round burst. The third one is full auto. The fourth one is a weight, meaning the gun is heavy. I'm pretty sure only LMGs have the weight. It just means that it's gonna train your stamina more if you're carrying it. The scope just means the gun has a scope. The mute means it's suppressed and the guy throwing his hands in the air, like the dizziness is basically like a flinch. If you uh, hit someone with a shotgun, makes them flinch and it's, it's very useful but when it happens to you, it's like there's no, like there, there's like a very low chance of recovery from it because it's like kind of broken, to be honest. Oh yeah, another another gun that has it is the Combat Magnum. The last part of the info section is at the bottom right where it says weapons and consumables. What that is is when you craft a weapon or consumable, it just shows what time it takes. This right here is something that I wish I knew as a beginner. Don't deconstruct weapons too much. Like, except ones that are maybe like a grease gun. Don't ever really, um, like deconstruct like the yellow, the yellow assault rifles or the, um, the purple ones. Like, I don't like this gun, but I know that that might change in the future. So something that I did when I was just starting in, in Vigor is when I didn't like a weapon, I would deconstruct it. And then turns out later on, I would start using it and I wouldn't have any. So this is an alt account that I just created, right? like a few months ago and because i didn't deconstruct any i have 19 so i don't like this gun but say in like a year or two i like it if i don't deconstruct any of these i'll have like 200 of them by then it, it basically comes down to don't deconstruct weapons unless you have the experience of that weapon to say no this is like a completely trash gun this is this is what i do i don't deconstruct all of them so say i don't really like using the swiss so what i'll do is i'll cut it in half or like take a quarter of it out to where like i'll just deconstruct like five of them and basically i'll just get those materials right um because materials are something you need Something I just want to say about crowns is I wouldn't ever recommend purchasing crowns with real money because you can just generate them in game and you can also get them from rewards. Like in in my opinion, you can you can do whatever you want, but in my opinion, I don't ever spend my crowns. Like I never spend my crowns on building weapons like this right here like for this for instance like if i spend 15 it will only cut off 50 percent so it will take 10 minutes that and that 15 crowns takes one day to generate and depending on how much your um antenna is built as a beginner it may take like weeks to get even 15 crowns it, it like even if you're established in the shelter it's just like just save your crowns unless unless you have like 10,000 or something like that like yeah you could you could flex on them and buy you know more loot in the encounter or buy some insurance but me personally just like I was just saying I don't ever buy any of that. So why is it that I don't spend crowns is because there's only a certain amount of time before the season ends. And as you can see right there, it's 790. And you're also the only the only way that you could buy seasons is with crowns and with seasons, you get more in game things. So like 
there's no point basically to sum it up don't waste your crowns because you grinded for them but uh yeah that's something that i figured out in the beginning of when i started bigger and i'm very happy that i did and not just spend money on like more loot and encounters and insurance don't like don't ever do that like if you're trying to like grow your crowns don't ever buy that stuff because it's it's gonna it's just basically it's it's not good for growing crowns all right guys so that's the video if you guys enjoyed the video i'd appreciate if you guys subscribe and like the video i also have a few other channels if you guys would like to check them out i have a music channel i have a spiritual mental health channel and i also have a vigor and daisy based clan channel where we post our clips and everything if you want to even join the clan uh you can check out you know the everybody killers uh clan page in the description everything all the details on how to join and everything if you guys have any video suggestions or questions about this video just put them down in the comments below i also live stream on twitch every thursday and i'm gonna start live streaming on youtube soon um pro probably shortly after this video drops because I didn't want to provide any live stream content without getting this video done because I know the community or my community has been waiting on this because you know the last video it's been months since I dropped the last one and I just need to get this video done for you guys so yeah I, I love you all and uh, yeah thanks for all the support on the last video everyone that was supporting on the last video thank you so much that video was huge success to this channel like it's crazy um but yeah i love you all um thank you so much